Welcome back to Brain Blaze, a weekly podcast about epilepsy by epileptics for epileptics and their caretakers. I'm your host, David Clifford. In this episode, I'll cover two related but different topics, neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, and how they have been integral in putting the pieces of my life together after traumatic brain injuries. If you're new to Brain Blaze, I just want to state that I'm not a medical expert. I'm just someone that has struggled with the ins and outs of epilepsy for almost three decades. My hope is that this podcast can provide insights that listeners just cannot get through existing support structures. I've had three brain injuries so far. Knock on wood. My head smashed in a car accident in my teens. A status epilepticus event, as I described in our last episode. And of course, resection brain surgery in 2017. After each, I noticed a significant reduction in ability to comprehend information, apply basic motor skills, and a reduced application of memory. Without applying what I've learned about neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, I'm positive I wouldn't be able to host these podcast episodes. Neurogenesis, or the process by which neurons are formed in the brain, is not a new concept at all to neuroscientists. But when I say neurogenesis, I really mean adult neurogenesis. This concept, that in an adult, the neurons are being created continuously through their lifespan, while pretty simple, is often taken granted by most of us. In the early 1960s, a genius named Josef Altman discovered that neurons in the brain continuously reform in adults. As an independent investigator at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, he published a paper in Science entitled, Are New Neurons Formed in the Brains of Adult Mammals? When anyone of a particular age hears the following line from this Partnership for a Drug-Free America's 1987 Public Service Announcement. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. They'll immediately think, and might even say the following. Any questions? One of the reasons for this is because up until the late 90s, Josef Altman's work was virtually ignored. It was taken as law that neurons were formed when we were an embryo. You could only lose neurons, but never gain what you've lost. When Josef Altman's work was analyzed again in the late 90s, it produced a huge paradigm shift. Suddenly it made sense to doctors when people of epilepsy said it took a few days for their brains to come back to normal after a difficult seizure. What we were calling rewiring was finally gaining traction. While neurogenesis is now accepted as law in the field of neuroscience, neuroplasticity is still a little bit more controversial. Mind you, Everyone in neuroscience admits that it exists. They still just don't agree with regard to what neuroplasticity actually means. The word has been hijacked by different portions of the field to represent different things to the point where the word has become to represent a overhyped mixed bag of concepts that have quickly become overspouted by people with no experience about what they are talking. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. That's all great, David. But what does that mean to a person of epilepsy? If your brain suffers a traumatic event, say, a seizure cluster, a convulsive seizure resulting in loss of oxygen for a few minutes, status epileptic event, or even a stroke, your brain goes into a state of heightened neurogenesis, trying to build up lost neurons. Now, of course, not all damage can be repaired. That's where neuroplasticity comes in. Studies have shown that actively using your brain in both the sections you think you lost, while also activating new areas, are beneficial for your brain overall. This kind of makes sense, right? I mean, we all agree that if a dedicated gymnast practices tumbling for their floor exercise, they'll get better over time. Neuroplasticity takes additional leap forward to suggest that a very small percentage of the invested work, say on strength or on balance, can be directly applied 
to the uneven bars. A completely different but related event. So, when training your brain, it turns out there's literally an endless supply of activities from which to choose. This is also, unfortunately, where the hype of neuroplasticity gets a bit full of itself. For example, one site might suggest that if one part of your brain is damaged, then one must start this particular activity, while another so-called expert might suggest another. The truth is, if you want to exercise your brain, start something, anything, now. Remember what Einstein said. Anyone spends 15 minutes a day learning something new. In a year, he will be an expert. In five years, a national expert. Find an activity in which you are interested. Something that engages you every day. Something that pushes you intellectually and maybe physically too. If you try something for a month and you find that you hate it, stop it and try something new. You're allowed to drift. Taking a class at a local community college is great because it provides motivation to ensure that the work gets done. But for some, the extra stress of class, homework, tests, etc. might just be too big. Start small and continue, but start right away. Remember what Mark Twain said, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. And here are the activities that have provided the most help to me. Learning a language. Welcome, Giacomo. We have come to escort you to the castle. We... Haven't we met before? Uh, it's not very likely, my good man. You see, I'm uh, on my way back from the Italian court. I'll speak you the king's English with no trace of accent. Uh, my dear sir, Giacomo is the master of many, many tongues indeed. French. Je le dois sauter, je le parle sauter au déplat, le fleur, je le patasse au romantique. Je le passe toi, mais non, romantique, je le patoie. Italian. A porto le vende, le sorte, le basta. A la forza, le vende, le sende, le barda, le malte, le forza, le vende. German. Was haben Sie ausgehalten, das Knei wieder haben, das Schmerzen wieder Hülle, Knei, Schmerzen, das Knei wieder Hülle, haben Sie geflummt in die Helmen, falls geil, was muss geflummen, das Malz in die Knei wieder Hülle. Which means in any language, why tarry? Let us off to the castle. Off to the castle. Off to the castle. To the castle. Going with learning a language, traveling is another easy way to stimulate one's mind. Studies have shown that a healthy dose of simple change in surrounding is great. Similarly, forcing your brain to look at the world around you while you stay in the same place works equally well. A way one can accomplish this is by studying visual art, like learning to paint. And do these little X's, see? Little X's. There. That's just the way the teacher used to grade my paper in school. Just... Or sculpt. Ready, and five, six, seven, five, seven, girls. Knees over toes, warming up your quads. Let your heels touch them. No, 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 no. That's body sculpting. A completely different but still useful skill. After my not so recent brain surgery, I chose drawing as a way to recover a lot of my lost mental capacity. Why drawing? Well, as a software engineer, I trained with logic for more than 25 years, and I had become a little. well. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes, I believe no permanent damage was done. What happened? The occipital area of my head seems to have impacted with the arm of the chair. No, Mr. Spock, I meant what happened to us. That we have yet to ascertain. I thought art was as far as possible as I could get from anything I had done before. Plus, it was something I personally had no talent with. After the effects of the surgery, I couldn't even draw a circle. Finally, drawing seemed like a great idea because it could be done anywhere requiring only a pencil and paper. But I have to admit, there was also a bit more of an inspiration. I am a self-proclaimed tech nerd. I don't think of it as an insult, but believe it or not, there was a time before big tech, Comic-Con or Marvel Studios, 
where people like me were ridiculed. <clears throat> when you were a baby in your crib, your father looked down at you. He had but one hope. Someday my son will grow to be a man. Well, look at you now. You just got your asses whipped by a bunch of goddamn nerds. Nerds! Well, if I was you, I'd do something about it. When I found that the internet was filled with world-class comic book pencilers willing to teach the world how to draw, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. I mean, would you pass up the opportunity to learn physics directly from Professor Feynman? We're exploring. We're trying to find out as much as we can about the world. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate uh, laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, then that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, its nature is there, and she's going to come out the way she is. Or electronics from Nikolai Tesla? Or playing the guitar from Eddie Van Halen? We as a society have never had as much resources to learn so much. It's a wasted opportunity if we don't take advantage of it. Ultimately, the thing you don't want to do is become too entrenched in your daily ritual for months or years at a time. Your brain is going to become inactive, for example, if you leave work at the same time, to drive to the same restaurant, to sit with the same friends at the same table, in the same chair. Afternoon, everybody. Norman? Hey, what's happening, Norm? Well, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Sammy, and I'm wearing milk bone underwear. Learn to switch up even the small things in your lives every so often. Switch it up to take the least traveled path. Reach out to that friend with whom you haven't talked in a while. Listen to that full album on which you've only heard a few tracks. Or finally go to that restaurant you keep passing every day. You know, the one that your friend recommended a few years ago and you still haven't gone in? What? Is that only me? Every little thing helps. We would love to hear your comments or questions regarding this or any of the other podcast episodes. You can reach out to us in the comment section at brainblaze.com, through email at social at brainblaze.com, or Twitter at brainblaze. If you like this episode, help us out by providing a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your content. One small click really does help. See you next time.